I want to do a crash course about dimensioning. I want to highlight some things that I'm going to be expecting in your drawings from now on. Uh, remember this uh, PowerPoint is available on Canvas, so you can go preview that or review that as needed. I expect that you get this information in your notebooks. Okay, the idea of having a standard is that so if you have different people working on something, they can all agree about how things are to be done and how things are to be measured and how things are to be communicated. That's the point. In engineering, there are multiple standards and you have the acronyms down here. ANSI is for the American National Standards Institute and this is what we are using primarily in our class. There's also another one in the company I worked at previously. It was ISO and that stands for the International Organization for Standardization. And about 100 countries are in using that right now. Other standards, there are two military standards, the Department of Defense and just straight out military standard. I suspect it has uh, something to do with is it internal or are external people preparing these things for the military. DIN is the German Standards Institute. Uh, that's the one that they came up with and that is what German engineers use. They are among some of the best engineers in the world. JIS is the Japanese Industrial Standard. Uh, they are world-class manufacturers so this is their engineering standard that they use. And then CEN stands for the European Standards Organization. I suspect that most European companies adhere to the ISO standards though. All right, uh, you should have some drawings that I provided for you. You need to know what extension lines are. In this case, you can see that the extension lines go from the object and straight out parallel to the lines that they're measuring. Notice that the dimension text is either between the extension lines or next to the extension lines. The dimension line has arrowheads on it and it runs from one extension line to the other and then the arrowheads help us understand the difference between extension lines and the object lines themselves. This is where the dimension lies. Notice how none of the extension lines contact the object line unless the, you shouldn't see any crossing here unless it's absolutely necessary to describe the part. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is the dimensions occur outside of the part, not inside the part. That makes it confusing if you do that, so don't do that. And notice how the largest measurement is outermost and the smaller measurements are innermost. All right. If the dimension text won't fit between the lines, you need to make sure that it's outside the line, like this. Again, notice there is space between the extension lines and the object line. Uh, something else we'll talk about when we're doing drawings, your dimensioning, if you can make it happen, needs to be between views, not between borders and views, if you can avoid it. Also notice that none of these are connected to hidden lines. Notice that the dimension text is placed in the middle, both horizontally and vertically. So it's centered in every way that you can make that happen. There are a couple of different methods. One is unidirectional and one is aligned. We are going to be using unidirectional in this class. Unidirectional, all of the numbers are lined up left to right. In aligned, the numbers are lined up with that plane. So these are all in X, these are all in Y. There are two kinds of dimensions, size and location. Size is telling us exactly how large to make the part. Location is helping us understand relationships between edges and centers and things like that. So you can see right here, the location dimension is telling us from this edge, this is where that center has to be. And over here we can see that these two lines are telling us how wide the slot has to be. So this is a dimension line versus a location line. Chain dimensioning is something that is used in architecture 
it will result in manufacturing um, inaccuracies. So we will not be using this, but this is what it looks like. So you specify the length of each segment, and that's how you would see that the total part is one and a half inches. Again, this is used for structure, and it's used for um, architecture. We're going to be using datum dimensioning. This reduces manufacturing deviations because we're using a common point for all uh, measurements. If you look at this, this is an example. Every one of these three measurements begins at this leftmost edge. Also notice the widest one is outside, the middle is in the middle, and the lowest length is down at the bottom. So these kind of ascend in length as you move away from the part. The idea is if you are machining this part, everything's going to be referencing this left edge. So this will be exactly 0.5. This will be exactly 1 inch. And the total part will be exactly 1.5. Chain dimensioning, you would see some variations on those edges. Okay. These are some reference symbols. Uh, you have a copy of this in your notebook. Some of the ones I need to point out. Uh, reference information is put in parentheses. This is the diameter symbol. This explains radius. Diameters are applied to circles, and radius is applied to arc and curve measurements. This is the spot face symbol. What this means is if you drill a hole, it's going to be flat on the bottom. Countersink, that means that the hole will be tapered at the top, or it will have a point at the bottom. This symbol is for depth, so if you have a hole, you have to describe how deep it's going to go. The X tells you that, hey, there's several parts or several features on this part that are exactly the same. We've dimensioned it here, and you have multiple. So if you see something that looks like this, it's exactly like this. This is a C with an L through it. This is something we'll use to specify a center line. In our dimensioning practices, we're normally just going to know what a center line looks like. This helps us define an arc, and this is specifically for a slope. We probably won't use slope much at all. There are two ways of dimensioning angles, the coordinate method and the angular method. We will use only the coordinate method unless it's absolutely necessary to use this angle. Because if you look at these dimensions here, you can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out this angle and put a little trig in there if you need to do that. But if you're machining this, you're going to be more interested in the length of this side of the object and the length of this side of the object, and this will just work itself out. Chamfers are where you have a bevel on the edge, and there's two ways to show that. You can put the degree and a dimension, or you can specify the horizontal and vertical dimensions. You can also specify an angle and a depth dimension. And if you have a countersink like this, you can specify this angle and the width at the top. This is easier to explain with the picture. There are three ways to show radius. One is with an arrow from the inside. One is with a leader line from the outside. And the one we prefer in this class is using a center point that goes to the arc. That's the one we're going to try to use most often. Fillets and rounds. This is where you have a 90 degree angle. If it's external, it's called a round. And if it's internal, it's called a fillet. And those are described with a radius. Again, we like to use the radius with the center point. That makes the most sense. Circles are reported as diameters. So we see the diameter symbol. And it also needs a center point to tell where that circle is going to begin. So if you're manufacturing this part, you need to know where to place the drill bit to drill the hole. Holes need to also include depth information. And 
what you see here is the top view of this shaft and the different diameters of each circle. This is interesting to see, but we're not going to do this as far as I plan. Uh, for example, if you look at this windshield, if you were going to make this spline and curve here, you would need to identify several reference points along this so that it could be machined properly. When you see the X, that means you have two features that are identical. So this is 2X. So it says there's two. If it said 4X, you would have four that were identical. So if you look at this, we've specified the diameter of the hole, that it's a spot face hole, the diameter of the hole at the bottom, and that it's a quarter inch deep. That means that that describes this hole, and we can also know that this one is exactly the same. When you're looking at radial patterns, it's important to understand this angle from the center. And we'll do more of this when we look at uh, modeling wheels. That's the end.